Morning church, welcome back to our online service. And let's start this morning by singing this song. And this song was inspired by Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. It reads, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. You know, indeed, Christ is our assurance. For he gave us salvation so that we can be washed by his blood. So let's sing this song. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, so that we can remember His glory as we sing. Come and sing. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Hero of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior another day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior another day long. Perfect submission, perfect submission, perfect daylight, visions of rapture, now bliss on my side, angels descending, bring from above. of mercy whispers of love we sing this is my story this is my story this is my song praising my Savior not 
And what we want will heaven bring Never lasting life with Him Then we will rise to meet the Lord Then sin and death will be destroyed And we will feast in endless joy When Christ is ours forevermore I will sing hallelujah Oh sing hallelujah Our hope springs eternal Oh sing hallelujah Now and ever we confess Christ our hope Alive and death We we'll sing it again Hallelujah Oh sing Hallelujah Our hope springs eternal Oh sing Hallelujah Now and ever we confess Cries our hope in life and death now and ever we confess Christ our hope in life and death Yes, Lord, Amen Christ our hope in life and death For you, you are the Lord in whom we can trust And to you, we sing this song In whom I can trust You are the rock I can stand upon Every step of the way You take my hand and say You will always be here Right beside me When I call on you I know you'll come to me Sing it again. You are the Lord in whom I can trust. You are the rock I can stand upon. Every step of the way, you take my hand and say, You will always be here, right beside me. When I call on you, I know you'll come to me And we say, you are my Lord In whom I can trust You are my fortress, you're my deliverer my strength for all of my days I place my hope in Jesus You love me with your life You're the rock of my salvation In whom I can trust we sing it again, you are my Lord, you are my Lord, in whom I can trust. You are my fortress, you're my deliverer, my shield, my strength. of my salvation in whom I can trust You love me You love me with your life 
You're the rock of my salvation In whom I can trust Let us pray together, brothers and sisters. Dear Heavenly Father, we worship you for you are God. We praise you for you have done marvelous works in our lives. We confess our sins to you for you are our God. We can repent for you have guided us to know your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the gospel and we thank you for reminding us from your word last week sermon by Pastor Sharon, that we are the blessed ones. Indeed, blessed are the repentant, for they shall receive your forgiveness, protection, guidance, and restoration. So Lord, we ask of you to help us to realize our sinful desires, to realize how weak we are in doing your will so that we will depend on you, repent and live a blessed and truly happy life for your glory. And at this moment, we gather as a body of Christ, deployed at different homes, humble ourselves and wait upon you, O Lord. Speak, O Lord, and your people shall listen to you and do your will and all this for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Scripture reading, Psalm 73, verse 21 to 28. When my soul was embittered, when I was pricked in heart, I was brutish and ignorant. I was like a beast toward you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Verse 27, For behold, those who are far from you shall perish. You put an end to everyone who is unfaithful to you. But for me, it is good to be near God I have made the Lord God my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. Good morning. Our reflection on God's Word today comes from Psalm 73, verses 21 through 28, which has just been read for us. I've entitled our discussion today, a different perspective. Perspective is how we see and frame reality. Is a glass half full or is it half empty? Well, that depends on your perspective, on how you see what is in the glass. Perspective can give us hope or it can land us in despair. Asaph, the author of this psalm, shared his perspective of the world after he had tripped and fallen. He writes in the second verse, As for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. And from his jaundiced perspective, he saw that the wicked prospered enjoyed good health, sailed through life without burdens. 
they are unchallenged in their arrogance, conniving, and oppression. His reality led him to conclude, as he writes, this is what the wicked are like. Always carefree, they increase in wealth. That is, as the psalmist says, till I entered the sanctuary of God, then I understood their final destiny. In the presence of God, he saw a different perspective. In the light of eternity, he saw that God cannot be mocked. A person reaps what he or she sows. In this segment of the psalm, which is the last part of Psalm 73, I have taken the liberty of giving the background from the earlier part of the psalm, but here, as we come to the conclusion of his thinking in Psalm 73, let me share three perspectives. First of all, Asaph gives us an infected perspective of the world. When you and I are hurt or wounded in our spirit, we are inclined to be cynical as well as bitter. We resort to irresponsible outbursts and behave like a bull in a china shop, not perturbed by what we destroy or what we offend. As the writer says in the 21st and the 22nd verses, when my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you. We react because our convictions do not square with our reality. And yet, it is at this point of vulnerability that God's presence is the safest place to go to. I remember one time a woman mad with rage came to me and sat down in front of me and yelled at me. Why is God so bad to me? There is no God. God must be dead. And I was shocked by her reaction. And I just calmly asked her, well, tell me what led you to such a conclusion? And so she was pouring out her grief, how life had been unkind to her, how she had endured more bad turns than is required of a normal human person. And so she resorted to that conclusion, there must be no God, God must be dead. And so in trying to assuage her anger, I said to her, all right, let's just suppose you are correct, that maybe at this point you murder God and that you have just killed God, all right. Let's take him out of our equation. Now then, what's your problem? And so she started ranting and raving again against God. And I held her peace and reminded her again, but you just killed God. How are you going to rant and rave and complain against somebody you have just murdered? He's dead. There's nobody to complain to. And then she stopped for a while and thought, well, then maybe she replied, let's bring God back. Otherwise, I have nobody to complain to. And so she brought God back. So she murdered God and she resurrected God. And now she can resume her complaint. It is at that point of vulnerability when we are mad with rage against God that we need to come into God's presence. Because that is the safest place that we can go to when we are raging and when we are angry because life has not been fair to us. When we are infected and ill, 
It is healing that we need. When we are thrashing in pain, it is peace that we seek. When we are senseless and ignorant, it is direction and wisdom that we want. And it is only when we turn to God that our infected perspective will be healed. Is there someone amongst us today that is hurt in our soul and that we are reeling with anger because of some bad turn of events in our lives? Is there someone grieving and hurting because you trusted God but things did not turn out as you expect and you are angry at God. And with that infected perspective that God had done you a bad turn, that God did not answer your prayers, that perhaps it is at this point in your life that you see life as a glass that is half empty instead of half full. And it is as you are in that infected situation with an infected perspective that we should come to God. For it is when we come to God that we experience His imbued presence. And that's the second point that the psalmist raises in our text today. When we come to God alienated, He is always with you, as Asaph reminds us in this psalm. When we come to God lost, He will hold me by His right hand, guide me with your counsel, and take me into glory as the psalmist writes in our text today. His promise remains true. I will never leave you nor forsake you. It doesn't matter how forlorn you feel. It doesn't matter how angry you are at God. It does not matter how hard you shake your fists in the face of God. His promise remains true. He will never leave you or forsake you. His presence fills the universe. There is no place that you and I can go that God is not there. There is no hell so deep that you and I can descend into where God is not also present. The psalmist reminds us in that famous 139th psalm, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like day, for darkness is as light to you. There is no place in the hell holes that we dwell that God is not also there. That we come into God's presence when we feel alienated, when we feel God forsaken, there is no safer place than the presence of God. And so the psalmist in our psalm for consideration today says, I had an infected view of the world until I come into His presence. And when I come into His presence, I realize that this entire world is imbued with the presence of God, that His presence fills every nook and cranny of my experience. And then when I come into that presence of God, what God does is to induce a restoration, is to bring about my spirit with his spirit, 
for my mind to rest in His presence, for me to take pause and to realize that God is still active in the world and that He is working out His purposes, not only in the world, but also in my life. And because God is present everywhere, He is inviting us, when we come into His presence, to draw near to Him. He is there by us. He is there with us. He has never left us alone. He has never abandoned us. Even when we were thrashing in pain, even when we were rebelling with great voice and with great force, He is always there. But He is waiting for us to come to Him. As James reminds us in his letter, Come near to God, and He will come near to us. We are in the ambit of His influence and presence. But you and I have to take the initiative to come to God. After all, it was at our initiative that we raise a fist of rebellion and anger in the face of God. And so, using that same energy, we are invited to draw near to Him, to come into His presence. And when we step towards God, a restoration with Him will be prompted or induced. The psalmist reminds us in the 25th and the 26th verses, whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. A restored relationship with God changes our perspective of reality. And because the psalmist draws near to God, Suddenly, he sees the world differently. Suddenly, the cup is not half empty, but instead, the cup is now half full. So the psalmist writes in the 28th verse, As for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge and I will tell of all your deeds. And so here in this psalm, the psalmist presents us three perspectives, three aspects of reality. First, he tells us that if we have an infected perspective, then we will be ranting and raging in the face of God. But when we come into God's presence, and His presence is everywhere, we only need to draw near. Our perspective will change. And from a changed perspective, you and I will be drawn closer to God. And then when that happens, there will be an induced restoration of our relationship with God. Where are you this morning? If in the wake of this pandemic, you and I may be suffering financially and economically, maybe our job prospects are now in ruins, maybe we find it difficult to make ends meet and our families are in distress, and certainly our hearts are troubled. Are you ranting and raging against God because of what has happened? And your perspective has been infected because your soul is injured and your spirit is wounded? 
then instead of rebelling against God, perhaps now is the time to come into his presence. He is always there. He is right here. Even in your own home, as you are watching this video, as you are watching this recording and listening to God's word electronically, God is right there where you are. And you can come to him. And as you come into his presence, you will suddenly be filled with a new perspective that God has not left you forlorn, that God will not abandon you, that where God closes a door, he will open perhaps even just merely a window so that there might be light, his light that might come through into your dark existence and your darkened horizon at this time. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. In his presence, there is brilliance of his brightness so that you can see your next step ahead. And perhaps, instead of thrashing in agony and rebelling in anger, now is the time to be quiet, settling in our spirit and come into God's imbued presence. Because when that happens, something miraculous takes place inside of our souls. We become restored. God's presence fills our own spirit. His hope instills in us. And we are now filled with hope, a sense of purpose as we stride into the future, a future of God's making. What is there in the future? No one can tell you. No management guru can help you plan what the future will be like, especially when everything about the present is broken and all of the promises refused, denied, and disappointed. Our hope in God will never be disappointed. But you and I need to be restored to God, for our spirit to find his direction. Our relationship with God needs to be restored. Today, if your spirit is broken and you are upset with God and you cry out in defiance like our psalmist, that you are thinking that this world has come to naught and God's promises can never be realized. Then you realize that there is no other place you and I can go for succor, for support, for a fresh hope outside of the presence of God. When we come into God's presence and His presence imbue our reality, our spirits are drawn in restoration and then a fresh perspective will come. A settled spirit will be a trusting spirit as we put our hands in God's hand and he leads us into his future. And that is where I want to invite you today. In the wake of a broken economy, of tattered promises, of a broken society, to come into God's presence turn our lives to Him and trust in His promises. Will you pray with me as we close at this time? Our God and our Father, we thank you for your promises. They are as sure and as true as yourself. Father, you know the conditions of our hearts. You know the distress that we are undergoing. You know the fear in our minds. You know the anxiety in our spirits. Lord, we come to you 
we rest in you. We turn our lives to you. Where we cannot see clearly into the future, Lord, you hold that future in your hands. And so we entrust our lives, our future, our fortunes, all that we hold close and dear, we entrust to you. We invite your spirit to work out your purposes in our lives. Thank you for the assurance of your presence. And right now, dear Lord, in heeding your invitation, I draw close to you. I lift my spirit to you, to your embrace, to your comfort, and to your fresh direction. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us quieten our hearts as we prepare to come to the Lord's table and remember what He has done for us on the cross. Listen to the Word of God reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26. For I receive from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup of the supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Holy Communion is established by our Lord Jesus to unite his church to remember him. The breaking of the bread represents the perfect sacrifice of Christ's body, which is for us. The cup represents the new covenant in the blood of Christ, and it reminds us of his great redemptive plan to save us from sin. And for this, we remember the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sins as we partake the bread and cup together. The Bible teaches us that we ought to examine our hearts and attitudes as we come before the Lord's table. And therefore, let's come to the Lord in prayers, examine ourselves, and confess our sins to God. Let us pray. O merciful Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you. We thank you for your great love. We thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. And we thank you for calling your church to remember Christ redemptive work. We confess our sins before you and ask of you to examine our hearts and our thoughts that you may teach us to receive this bread and cup with pure and sincere heart. In the name of my Saviour and my Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Let us partake this bread together. And let us drink of the cup together. Let us give thanks to God. O oh God Almighty, we pray that you will bless us with unity in our family. Help us to love one another and help us to build a Christ-centered family. And may your church continue to shine for you as we wait for the Lord's coming. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For this morning's prayer time, let us pray for these three items. Number one, Singapore's 55th National Day on 9th August. Pray for wisdom for our elected government to lead our country out of this pandemic. Pray that Singapore will continue to be stable, safe and peaceful for all our people. Let us also pray that the body of Christ in Singapore will experience a spiritual revival and we will continue to enjoy religious freedom. Number two, our church AGM on 27th September. This will be the first time in our church history to have an AGM online. Please pray for our pastoral staff to have the wisdom in following legal guidelines in every detailed preparation of this meeting. Pray that all matters of discussion and approval will proceed smoothly. Number three, worship service at home. Let us give thanks for today's worship at home. As we enter the fifth month of the circuit breaker, we are thankful to God for the experience of His anointing and grace. Until the Lord opened a way to return to worship at 16 Newton Road, let us pray that as a church, we will continue to experience growth and renewal through this current situation. Let us pray. Hi, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Announcement time. Bible class. The Word Ministry will begin a series of Bible lessons based on the Gospel of John from 6th of August on every Thursday. Please look out for the Bible class Zoom link that will be sent out to you soon. And we welcome all of you to join our online Bible class. Worship service at home. 
Worshipping at home with our family is a new spiritual habit that we have cultivated recently. And we would like to welcome your friends and relatives to join us online. We encourage you to call them and send them our worship online link. And please invite them to join us for the Sunday worship service at home. Small group leaders meeting. The meeting will be held on 4th of August, Tuesday, and we invite all small group leaders to join this meeting online. Sunday Offering Offering is a spiritual habit and a response to God's word. We may use four ways to make our contribution, check, fund transfer, cash offering, or pay now. Please refer to the bulletin or church website for more information. Thank you. Receive the blessings from God. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forever and ever.